Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you are having a good Tuesday. Um, it is a gorgeous day uh, and a, a blessed one as well. Uh, I want to continue a little bit about uh, hope, um, and I want to talk a little bit about uh, being away and and maybe re-understanding the way church is. Um, I want to look at the story that we have from Acts. Because the church at the time of uh, Acts, uh, in the early days, um, really was more of a movement than a church. There were many things that were going on. Uh, yes, there were people who were gathered together in Jerusalem, um, but they were more of a community that fit together. Um, and they were trying to find their identity a little bit. Um, many of them uh, were still were still very good Jews that went to the synagogue and and uh, did you know went and did prayers and things like that. And they be were beginning to reimagine and reunderstand who they were. But one of the other things that went on is that they were not just simply in Jerusalem. And so Acts chapter 8 verse 4 says this, Now those who were scattered went from place to place proclaiming the word. And I think about that being scattered, because um, we are. We're scattered right now. But that doesn't mean that we can't continue to be uh, active in our sharing of our love for God, of our uh, blessings, of our understanding of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. But the other side of that is, is that as things begin to continue, I think part of what we need to understand is, is that th we will m likely be more separated than we are together. Um, and the church in and of itself has begun to move that way anyway. When you look at some of the um, pieces about the, the church, the, the younger people being um, spiritual but not religious, kind of a, we, we believe in God, but we don't want to believe in the, we don't necessarily believe in the institutional church. Um, it's a way for us to begin to think about how is it that we become a place for people to be connected and to be uh, to learn and to be missional and to be faithful in ways that don't necessarily mean that we're uh, all gathered together. Um, I don't know that that's what that's going to look like. I don't know what that means, but uh, it's something that I've begun to think about because I don't know what this is going to look like. Um, you know, I think some observers have, are suggesting we may be uh, at the end of June or the end of July, uh, before we can begin to even think about gathering together. Um, and when we do, what is that going to look like? Um, you know, are we going to be uh, spaced out in our sanctuary? Will we be singing? Uh, likely we won't be singing. Um, we won't be, you know, sharing the peace the way that we do we'd normally have. We won't be, um, we won't be doing communion the way that we have in the past. And so I wonder about um, how how that is and what that might be and whether or not it makes more sense for us to be gathered together in smaller groups, in smaller um, gatherings where we can worship together, where we can kind of be connected to one another. Um, and uh, and then uh, interconnected by uh, the larger group um, through maybe uh, a, you know worship services that we watch together online in smaller groups and make our connections that way. Um, and so we do uh, small worship gatherings maybe on Sunday morning. Maybe we move worship to a different time of the day to meet the needs of people. Um, I uh, saw a uh, a piece from, uh, or I talked with uh, one of the ministers here in in the area that uh, they moved their their worship time to one thirty in the afternoon because that's what fit their group better, and they're doing a conference call uh, for worship. And so, what 
this church look like is a real question that I think we have to ask. And um, one of the people that I am friends with and colleagues with, uh, Sarah Lund, who is the pastor of First Congregational Church in Indianapolis, um, she posted on Facebook this morning, the question that we need to ask is not, not when we will be uh, gathering together as church again, but why are we gathering together as church again? And until we answer that question, the when needs to be uh, pushed back a little bit. And so I think we need to continue to ask our quest ourselves, why are we gathering? Um, and understand what that means and maybe understand what it might mean to gather in different ways and in different fashions. Um, and so being scattered, being diaspora, does not mean that we are separated from one another as the body of Christ, but maybe the body of Christ is something that's a little different than what we have um, that what we have known. Maybe we get to reimagine what that is. And so I have hope in that. I have hope in the future of what God is doing in this this um, re uh, embarking on uh, a new way or a different way of understanding it, who it is we that we are as the body of Christ, as children of God, God of followers of Jesus. And so I invite you to think about those things and what does it mean to you uh, to be a gathered body um, and beyond fellowship? What is the what is the why uh, that we have for worship? And so I leave you with that. Why? Why is it that we are church? Let us pray. God, we ask you for guidance and love as we continue to move forward through these days. As we imagine what this might be going forward for us as your beloved children, help us be open and understanding that the way that we have always known may not be the way that fits uh, best for us as your people. But maybe we continue to be good and faithful stewards that we uh, learn different ways to connect and share our faith so that more people know who you are, that they, are, they find their trust and their life transformed in Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. We will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.